So you know how I said I had a new favorite lens, the Surrey Anamorphic? It's pretty good, but decided to step it. <laughs> Shooting Anamorphic, guys. Do you like it, Isaac? It's pretty good, Lower right? Lower it a little bit. <laughs> As I'm stepping into buying an Airy cinema camera and moving into some higher quality production projects, I'm trying to figure out what lenses I should invest in. And because of my boredom in lenses, I've gone down the rabbit hole of anamorphic lenses. And I got the chance to see the brand new, soon to be out Atlas Mercury anamorphics on set with the brand new Airy 35, possibly the greatest Hollywood cinema camera ever made. Check out the video I made on the Airy 35. These lenses are unlike any lens you've probably ever seen. If you like cinematic, you're gonna love these. Guys wanna see some anamorphic action? Do we look cool or what? The more we squeeze, the more cinematic this gets, right? This is for when you want lenses that can double as like combat weapons. <laughs> Just yeah. throw them. If you're in a dark alley. This is an 80 mil anamorphic lens from Atlas. Uh, this is incredible. This is probably one of the coolest lenses I've ever held in my hands. It's probably why I clicked on this video too. So if you're like me, you've kind of been bored of all the lenses coming out. They're all kind of just the same. Different company, but they look exactly the same except for this company. These are Atlas Anamorphic. So this was their first set, the Orions, and these are the brand new Mercury's. And these will give you a totally different look than your normal spherical boring lenses that are perfectly sharp and perfectly clean and perfectly perfect. These aren't that, but they're so sick. Both the Orions and the Mercury's are really nice, but I think the Mercury anamorphics are gonna be super popular. A, because they're 1.5 times squeeze, so you can use it on something like the Aries and film 4x3 or 3x2 and get a nice two to one-ish final product so you don't have those black bars if you don't want them. And then you can use it on a 16 by nine camera like the FX3 and it won't be a sliver, it'll be a nice normal black bar on top and bottom look. B, they're full frame. C, they're kind of affordable, around $8,000 a lens, which sounds like a lot, but Hawk Anamorphics can be anywhere from 30,000 plus. Cook Anamorphics are 35, 40K. Cook Anamorphic zooms are around $64,000. Airy Anamorphics are anywhere from 40 to 50K per lens. So yeah, they're affordable. D, the close focus, and E, the size. They're actually not that big compared to most cinema lenses. All the footage that I've shown uh, Nick shot on, what was what was the short film called that you guys did? Remain to be titled, but it, <laughs> it's for the Parkinson Society. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. Derek Lamoureux directed it. Um, yeah, go and check it out once it's out. It's not out yet, right? But not yet. Um, hopefully it'll soon. <laughs> so the Atlas Orion lenses are about $10,000 each. These things are expensive. The Mercury's are around $6,000. Which you might think like, what, how does, how does this make sense? These are bigger. But like I said, they're two totally different tools. And a lot of people want that two times squeeze, that more drastic or exaggerated anamorphic bokeh look. But then the Mercury's might be nicer for people like me that don't have as much money to put into productions to deal with lenses like these. So just two very different tools. Man, the focus is just so smooth and nice. Just the overall build quality is so nice. You can pick this up and right away just know that this is money. Literally, it costs a lot of money. Now, even though I can do this, uh, which I'll, I'll probably film more stuff like this too. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait to test the Orions more when I get my Airy Alexa Mini LF. These things are gonna be. Nick, is this a little overkill or? No, I think it's a perfect marrying <laughs> of this camera body and this lens. You can tell from when you always want your lenses to prop your camera body up yeah. when you put them together. That's yeah, yeah, despite yeah. what they teach you everywhere else. You What's the that. ratio, like camera body size to lens that you usually want? Maybe Standard, like you want 80% lens, 20% <laughs> camera body. As you can see, we're doing that pretty good. Here. We're pretty good. <laughs> Nick, how much do you like anamorphic? I love anamorphic. It is my favorite thing in the world to shoot because it doesn't look like how we see the world. So anything that can make the frame funky, anything that just puts the viewer into a headspace, I am just, I have fully embraced and anamorphic is the thing we, we think of when we think of like Hollywood movies, 
but it's really just such a fun way to be like, wow, we are imprinting our view on the viewer here. So they're very cool. So real quick, an anamorphic basically uses more of the sensor and then gets you those black bars on top and the bottom because you're kind of squeezing the image down and that's why you get the black bars on top and bottom. That's like kind of like what people see. And then of course the flares, flares are really cool. They're, they're cool, yeah. right? I like them. But for me, that isn't even like the biggest thing. I really like like the background bokeh blur. Yeah. That for me is like, it's an oval bokeh. So usually we're used to round. It's an oval shape. So it's really interesting. And then for me, one of the biggest things is how wide they are. I love that they're so wide looking, but still like, I don't know, the frame is just so interesting to me. So fun fact about anamorphics, this is what I learned when I was researching them, is they were originally uh, invented for uh, like World War footage because it would give a larger landscape. So you could actually see more uh, of what was happening. So uh, that was the reason that- Really, the that's was what- made. Yeah. No way. Yeah, and then they brought them back for Hollywood movies because it just looked so out of this world. Like the background just looks like it, it just looks like a pastel painting or something. The way things are like stretched and fall off from the face, like it really does. It has a magical, just messed up look to it that like, if you were to put a focus chart on it, you'd be like, ooh, these are, <laughs> these are not good. But then you see it in the context of a story or a commercial or whatever you're, you're filming and you're like, it just feels right. So this 40 mil is wider than if you had a spherical 40 mil. Yeah. But so you are missing some of the top and bottom. Yeah, so the way it works is usually on a camera, you'd film on not a 16.9 sensor, although we've done some of that today. <laughs> you shoot on something called a 4.3 sensor so that when you de-squeeze or stretch the image, it comes out to that nice cinematic black bars like on top and bottom of your image. So a 40 mil of anamorphic actually means it's a 40 mil compression, which is like how much your images in and out of focus, that aspect, but it's actually a two times D squeeze. So it, it's a field of view of what you would consider a 20 mil spherical equivalent. So if, so if we were doing spherical, we'd need a 20 mil. Yeah, of that so it's kind of like the best of both worlds because you're getting the compression of those longer lenses with that vastness or field of view of your wider lenses. And I think that's another reason why people are drawn to anamorphic because optically it's like nothing else you can replicate. That's why I like anamorphic. I love how wide it is. I used to watch movies and be like, how do they get that crazy wide feeling? Anamorphic. Atlas Orion set is a two times squeeze. So it's going to squeeze it down by two. That's why that opening intro shot was such a like sliver because we're shooting on 16 by nine, not four by three, which would be like taller and then it would get squeezed down to a nice cinematic looking image. The new Mercury set, this is a 1.5 times squeeze and this is really cool. Okay, also these look super nice. They're quite big compared to these guys. The Mercury's, how are you liking them? I love the Mercury's. I think they're sharp, wide open. I think retaining that character, they're amazing. They're a small form factor. Like I, I think they're gonna become my favorite set of lenses to pull on set but the, the Orions are awesome as well. I would say they're larger than what some productions or maybe more single shooters are gonna be able to carry. Uh, <laughs> but image-wise, they're gorgeous. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, just make the choice that fits the look you're after the best because there are so many tools out there and these are two solid choices to get you there. Yeah, this isn't like V1, V2, these are like totally different tools but this just is so much more ah, if i could get it out of here this is so much more approachable just manageable plus one of my favorite things about the atlas uh anamorphics is that the close focus is very reasonable, especially for an anamorphic. Yeah, so if you're coming from a world of spherical where you're so used to like, look how close I, I could get, like, <laughs> I'm like two inches away from his face. <laughs> you just lost viewership by doing a close up on my skin. <laughs> 
Um, but these are a lot less intimidating in terms of like their close focus is around the one and a half to two foot range so that you can shoot more similarly to your style that you were shooting before without having the hindrance of being like, oh, I actually can't get those keys in focus pulling off the table or, yeah. you know, what might be a roadblock that some of the other larger anamorphics offer you. I'm so used to just taking my same like 35 mil and like getting a nice like medium or wide shot and then just coming in for some close-ups and stuff. With a lot of anamorphics, you cannot do that. It's like couple feet, three feet from, <laughs> is the closest focus you can get. These Mercuries are incredible for minimum focus distance. I think they might be some of the closest minimum focus you can get out of anamorphic. I don't know of anything that's closer. I think that's the closest. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's a, quite a difference here. Two times squeeze on this one, yeah. 1.5 on this one. So both these lenses, I would say you're using for your mediums to your medium close-ups. Both gorgeous, but one is definitely a heavier form factor. So depending on how many people you have on set, it might just be you, that I would factor into your <laughs> this decision making. might be a little too crazy for you. That is quite reasonable, actually. So I guess the big question is why the heck are we even talking about these? Well, uh, if you didn't hear, I bought an Arri Alexa Mini LF. This is not the mini lf this is, this is the mini LF. even more expensive <laughs> than what i bought this is the airy 35 you yes. own this one nick this he's, is my third baby he's kind of a good dp <laughs> he won't say it but he's kind of good and this is his baby and i also am joining the airy family welcome to the family <laughs> so with that i gotta figure out what lenses i might want to use so i asked atlas if i could test out their lenses the footage you're gonna see here is from the Mercury's. I'm gonna test out the Orions later on when I get my LF, um, but the footage you see is from Airy 35 and the Mercury's. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so as I'm gearing up to uh, get my Airy Mini LF, I'm looking at two different kinds of lenses. It's not just spherical like we're used to using. We're also looking at anamorphic lenses. So uh, Nick, when would you use spherical? When would you use anamorphic? Uh, so whenever there's like a story or a narrative where I'm trying to put people into like a movie headspace, I'm reaching for anamorphic just because it's so different than how our eyes. So see. not natural. It's uh, like very you're like. <laughs> it is like, it's like nothing how you see the world. <laughs> yeah. And spherical lenses, like they recreate uh, what, how we see the world. It's a very natural way. So when you're looking at things that are like, I want it to look like how I see it spherical is probably the better tool for that job. Now, that's not a hard, fast rule in any sense, but I think, yeah, the, the anamorphic lenses just like right away scream like this is a movie. This isn't real life, this is a movie, whereas spherical lenses can be more natural and more like real life. So this isn't really a review of these lenses or anything, this is just more of a first look. And I, for one, am like so happy that companies are making lenses that just have more character to them. I, I'm hoping that even spherical lenses start being more interesting. Like they have the, oh, my shoulder, my shoulder. Ah, my shoulder's been hurt for the last week. Like the, the bokeh on this Helios 442 is so cool. Why aren't, why aren't, like, why aren't companies making interesting yeah. lenses? I don't know. Sometimes the most perfect thing is an imperfect image. That's what I'm saying. We want some character. We don't want just the same old boring, boring. So yeah, uh, these are the Atlas Anamorphics. You'll be seeing more of them on my channel. And hopefully with, with Nick shooting some cool things too. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys.